How to multiply fractions? We have two fractions 5 over 12 and 24 over 25 and we have to multiply both of them. Now in these two fractions there are four parts. Numerator 1 let us take 5 as the first numerator let us call it numerator 1. 24 is our second numerator it's the numerator 2. Denominator 1 that is 12 and denominator 2 that is 25. So the four parts two numerators two denominators. Now what we have to do check any one numerator and one denominator. We have to check any numerator and any one denominator. So let us take 5 and 12. Okay so I am writing 5 and 12. Now what to check? Do they have any common factor? Do 5 and 12 have any number in common? that is a factor for both 5 and 12 no there is no such number other than 1 1 we will not consider okay so let us check any other number let's take 24 and 25 24 25 do they have any common factor i hope the answer is no there is no number uh, which has both 24 and 25 in its multiplication table okay then let's check some other numbers let us take 5. Now 5 is a numerator that is numerator 1 and let us take 25 that is denominator 2. So we told that we can check any numerator with any denominator. So 5 and 25. Do they have any common factor? Yes. 5 has 5 in its table and 25 in its table 2. So 5 is a common factor for both. Now let us do one thing. Let us strike 5 and 25. This is called cancellation. So we have to strike both the numerators and denominator who have common factor. Okay. Now we will figure out 5 multiplied by how much is 5? 5 multiplied by 1 is 5. So we will write 1 here. And again 5 multiplied by how much is 25? We know 5 multiplied by 20, uh, 5 is 25. So we will write 5 here. Now our new numerator becomes 1 and 5. Okay. Now let's check the other two set of numerator and denominator. So we have 24 and 12. 12 and 24. What are the factors of 12? 12 has the factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. 24, what are the factors? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Do they have any common factor? Yes, they have so many common factors. I can see 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 6, 6, 12, 12. You know other than 1 also there are so many common factors. So there are common factors. And who is the greatest common factor? That is 12. So let's take 12. We could have taken any other factor too but we are just doing it with 12. So what to do? We will strike 12 and 24. And we will ask to ourselves 12 multiplied by how much is 24? 12 multiplied by 2 is 24. So in place of 24 we will write 2. Again we will ask to ourselves 12 multiplied by how much is 12? So 12 multiplied by 1 is 12. In place of 12 we will write 1. Okay. Now these are our new set of numerators and denominators. So the new set of numerators are 1 and 2 the new set of denominators are 1 and 5. Now can you find any common factor between any numerator and any denominator 1 and 1? Yes 1 is a common factor for both 1 and 1 but I told you that 1 should be ignored. Any other set of numerator or denominator is there any common factor between 1 and 5 other than 1? No. Is there any common factor between 2 and 5 other than 1? No. 2 and 1? No. So now what we are going to do we are going to multiply the numerator with the numerator. So a new numerator. We will forget all the old numerators and denominators. So what is the new numerator? That is 1 multiplied by 2. So in the place of numerator, we will have 2. And we will multiply the denominator with the denominator. So in place of denominator, we will have 1 multiplied by 5. So in the answer, we will have the denominator as 5. So at the end, what can we write? We can write the answer is 2 over 5.
Let us take method two. How to multiply fractions? So everything is kept same. Numerator one, numerator two, five and twenty-four. Denominator one is twelve. Denominator two is twenty-five. We have seen that five and twelve have no common factor. Twenty-four and twenty-five have no common factor. But if we crisscross, five and twenty-five have the common factor five, and so we can strike both five and twenty-five. If we strike them. Uh, we can say five times one is five. Twenty uh, five times five is twenty-five. So our new numerator one and denominator two will be one and five. Okay. Now let's come to twenty-four and twelve. Numerator two and denominator one. So we are striking both of them. But say that you do not know how many factors are there in common. For 12 and 24, or you don't have time to find out or figure out the greatest common factor. But you can see one thing that both 12 and 24 are divisible by 2 because they have even number in the last digit. It's 4 and 2. So, uh, what if we divide 12 by 2? 2 into how much is 12? 2 into 6 is 12. So we can write 6 here in place of 12. Again, 2 into how much is 24? 2 into 12 is 24 so we can write 12 here now this is our new numerator 2 and denominator 1 that is 6 and 12 we will forget 24 and 12 again is there any common factor between any numerator and denominator so between 1 and 5 or 1 or 6 or 12 or 5 there is no common factor but for 12 and 6 we can see common factor both 12 and 6 are divisible by 3 okay So let's do one thing. Let's cancel them again. Strike six, strike two. Three multiplied by how much is six? Three multiplied by two is six. So let's write two here. Three multiplied by four is twelve. So we are going to write four here. So now our new numerator two is four, and our new denominator one is two. Two and four can be cancelled again. So we will strike them too. Okay. So what if we strike two and four? By divisibility rule, we know that both two and four are divisible by two. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. Now, is there any other common factor between any numerator and any denominator? See, now our new numerators are one and two. Our new denominators are one and five. Only these four numbers are not. Striked. All the other numbers are striked, so we will forget them. So one one no common factor. One five no common factor. Two one no common factor. Two five no common factor. Now we are going to do the multiplication. Numerator with numerator. And so what if we multiply one into two? That is two in the numerator. Denominator with denominator. What if we multiply one? With five, five in the denominator. Hence, our answer is again two over five. We have done in a different method. Method three. Okay, we can do one more thing. Let's not strike anything. We will just multiply the numerator with the numerator. That is five times twenty-four. We get one twenty. And if we do twelve times twenty-five, we get three hundred. Now this is a fraction. Reduce this fraction. You know how to simplify or reduce the fractions. So one twenty and three hundred both have the common factor ten. Both are divisible by ten. So what if we divide one twenty by ten? It becomes. We can strike here. Okay. So if we divide one twenty by ten, it becomes twelve. 30 times 10 gives us 300 so we can write 30 so after cancellation we get 12 over 30 now is there any common factor between 12 and 30 yes they both are divisible by 6 6 times 2 is 12 as we know 6 times 2 is 12 and 6 times how much is 30 6 into 5 is 30 Have you noticed? We have again reached to our final answer, that is, two over five. Nothing more in common, so our answer can be written as two over five. Okay, method four. Now let's do the same thing in a little bit of shortcut. So again, we will be multiplying 
our numerator with the numerator directly without striking or cancelling anything and denominator with the denominator. So, we already know the answer that is 120 over 300. Now, we will not divide 120 by 10 or 300 by 10. We can just, if we see there is one zero in the numerator and one zero in the denominator, we can just simply strike one zero with the other zero. Okay. So, one zero in the numerator can be cancelled with one zero in the denominator. That's the rule. If we had two zeros in the numerator, we could have cancelled two zeros from the denominator. So, if we have strike the zeros, what we get? We get again 12 over 30. Now, 12 over 30, again we know it's divisible by 6, both of them. So, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 5 is 30. We can again come to the answer by striking them. 2 and 5. Hence, we can reach this answer 2 over 5. Let's come to method 5. So, everything remains the same. We directly multiply 5 over 24 and 12 with 25. We get 120 by 300. We can also strike the zeros. And what will that give us? That will give us 12 by 30. Now, we don't want to divide 12 and 30 with the common factor 6. Because there are so many other common factors. Isn't it? 12 and 30 have the common factor 2 also. 12 and 30 have the common factor 3 also. So, as we can see, both the last digits of the numbers 2 and 0 are even numbers. So, 12 and 30 both are divisible by 2. So, if I, what if I don't want to cancel it with 6? I want to cancel it with 2. Of course, I can. So, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times how much is 30? 2 times 15 is 30. Okay, fine. Now our new numerator and denominator is are 6 and 15. Can we cancel 6 and 15 with any common factor? Yes, both 6 and 15 are divisible by 3. So, again we can cancel. 3 times how much is 6? 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times how much is 15? 3 times 5 is 15. And guess what? We got the final answer again 2 over 5. Now, how to multiply fractions? If you have some other fraction like 16 over 2 and 15 over 5, let's watch this case. Here, we again have those numerators and denominators. So, check any one numerator and any one denominator. That was the rule. So, now 16 and 5 do not have any common factor. 15 and 2 do not have any common factor. But 16 and 2 has common factors. So, do they have any common factor? If the question is there, you will say 16 and 2 have common factor. So, our answer will be 24. Let's see how. We have 2 times 1 that is 2. 2 times 8 is 16. Again, 15 and 5 have common factors. That is 5. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Now, there is no more common factor. We can see numerator with uh, denominator. Any numerator or any denominator you check, no more common factors are there. Now, what to do? What was the rule? We will multiply the numerator with the numerator. And the denominator with the denominator. Okay, so numerator is 8 times 3. Sorry for the bad handwriting. 8 times 3. That will give you 24. Okay. What about the denominator? 1 times 1. 1 times 1. That will give you 1. So, our answer should be 24 over 1. But please remember, if we have 1 in the denominator, if we have 1 in the denominator, we just ignore it. So, we can write it as only 24. That's our answer. Next, how to multiply fractions with no common factors? Now, we are taking 7 over 2 multiplied by 3 over 4. Now, there is no common factors. Can you see anything? 
7 and 2, do they have any common factor? 3 and 4, do they have any common factor? Let's take the other pair of numerator and denominators like 3 and 2 or 7 and 4. Any, anybody, any two uh, numerator or denominator, do they have any common factor? I don't think so. So we, what to do here? Here we will straight away multiply the numerator with the numerator. That is 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. And the denominator with denominator. Please remember, you cannot cancel 22 with 4. You cannot cancel denominator with denominator. We can see 2 and 4 have, both have common factor 2. But please never ever do that. That is wrong. Okay. So, we will just multiply them. This is wrong. So, if we multiply 2 and 4, we get 8. And our answer becomes 21 over 8. Next, how to multiply fractions with a whole number? What does that mean? We have a whole number 8 and we will multiply 8 with a fraction 3 over 5. Now, whenever we see a whole number like 8, that means it is actually 8 over 1. As I told you, if we have 1 in the denominator, then we are going to ignore it. So, 8 over 1 can be also written as 8. Now, the rules are same. Let's check the numerators and denominators. Okay. So, 4 is a denominator, 8 is a numerator and we can cancel them both by 4. Like 4 times 1 is 4 and 4 times 2 is 8. And now we have nothing more to cancel. In the numerator part, we will multiply 2 with 3. In the denominator part, 1 and 1 both gives 1. So, we can ignore the 1 in the denominator. Our answer will be 6. 2 times 3 is 6. How to multiply 3 or more fractions? Okay, so now we have 3 over 1 multiplied by 4 over 9 multiplied by 6 over 2. So you will follow the same procedure. Check any numerator with any denominator. So here I can see 3 and 9 can be striped because both of them have the common factor 3. So we will write 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 9 is Sorry, 3 times 3 is 9. Do we have anything more to cancel? Yes, of course. 2 and 4 can be cancelled. 2 and 6 can be also cancelled. So, we will take any pair that we like. Okay. 2 and 4 can be cancelled with 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Anything else can we cancel? Oh, I can see this also. 3 can be cancelled with 6. So, 3 times 1 is 2. 3, 3 times 2 is 6. Anybody left that I can cancel? I don't think so. So, in the numerator, we will just multiply all of them. So, there is 1 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2 again. What is that? 2, 2 into 2 into 1. That gives us 4. In the denominator, we had only 1 into 1. Also, in this denominator, is, uh, there is 1. So, 1 into 1 into 1 is 1 and we ignore 1. So, we will not write 1. So, our answer is 4. I hope you have understood. So, now you can try yourself and if you have any doubt, you can write to me in the comment section. I am giving you a multiplication for practice. That is 13 over 11 multiplied by 55 over 26 multiplied by 14 over 10. So, please try it at home and tell me if you have any other doubt. <laughs>